Hey yo. What's up, e? Um, I made like a seven part video series many months ago. I've done this experiment many times with various seeds. I was going to do another one to show people this. These are actually uh, alfalfa seeds. These have been exposed, just seed only exposure. Um, you could do them two different ways. You could just expose the seeds only and then germinate and grow them or you can expose them while they're growing. The effects are more dramatic if you expose them while they're growing, but it works perfectly well either way. Um, you know what blows my mind? And I, I don't care about views. What blows my mind is that something as amazing as this gets... You know, I make a, a video on... Uh, I didn't even want to make the video on um, gravity waves. And that crazy video has got like 38,000 views. It's like, well, fine, you know. Um, but stuff like this that anybody could duplicate, you know, in their house um, is fascinating. Um, this is based on some of the experiments of Rawls and Davis, magnetism and its effects on the living system. And of course, I literally wrote the book on magnetism. Of course, I own every book basically ever written on magnetism. And I've made some amazing discoveries. I've even made some discoveries that even Rawls and Davis didn't make, a couple that I'm going to keep quiet for now. Um, this book, and I, I can't stand conspiracy nuts, you know, that's not to say there aren't true conspiracies. I mean, obviously there are genuine conspiracies in the world, but, you know, I can't stand conspiracy nuts. Um, uh, in general, that's not to say that some aren't true. But this is actually a genuinely suppressed work. This book by Rawls and Davis is genuinely suppressed. When it came out, this book was quietly, uh, there's still some copies out there. Thankfully, it took me like a dog's age to get a copy of this. Um, but this is a genuinely suppressed, a, a government suppressed work, this book. Um, thanks to some people, I won't say who, this book is now um, accessible. I, I don't know who they are, but uh, somebody. Um... <laughs> Um, what is amazing is that the growth is so... Anybody could duplicate this in their damn house! I've had plenty of people duplicate this and, uh, you know, they report back the same thing. It's like, you're right, I've done this experiment a lot, a lot. I mean, I hate doing this experiment because I've done it so many times. But every time, the results are amazing. Amazing! You know? Why isn't anybody talking about this? You can radically change the growth of something. These guys, I've got this book underlined to hell. This is my, my, these are around my underlinings. Um, seed experiments, uh, chicken experiments, worm experiments. When I mean, they experimented on chickens as they were, uh, you know, uh, undergoing growth before they hatch, the uh, North Pole uh, exposed uh, chickens would uh, come out puny, uh, puny and scrawny, and the South Pole ones would come out uh, hardy and fat. Well, they get bigger to be bigger chickens, not necessarily fat. Of course, fat chickens are always better, especially since you plan on uh, chopping their heads off and eating them, right? No. <laughs> um, it would radically affect, to put a magnet one pole against uh, a cup of worms and a pile of dirt, it would radically affect them. The North Pole side of the magnet would drive the worms crazy, um, as if they were being blasted with, like, you know, death metal. They'd chew their way out of the styrofoam cup and, like, you know, crawl out and die. They'd rather die to get away from the North Pole of the magnet um, then you know, remain alive inside the dirt. Hmm. Now, as I've done this experiment many times, you can actually see this effect underneath the ferro cell too, by the way. This is visible. I predicted this long before I ever discovered these guys' books. They're both dead now. I mean, um, you can actually see it underneath the ferro cell. And it's exactly what I predicted with my equation on, uh, you know, magnetism and the reciprocating precessional hyperboloid that rarefaction occurs along the North Pole. The red stripe in, uh, indicates North Pole exposed seeds. Green stripe indicates South Pole exposed seeds. That there's rarefaction on the North Pole and there's uh, compression on the South Pole at South Pole at a rate of 1 to 5. It is a ratio of 5 on the South Pole to 1 on the North Pole. Like these, for example, just one example, alfalfa sprouts, which germinate and grow and reach maturity in basically seven days, depending on temperature and conditions. Um, this is in their first stage. They, they've only got like about eight hours, otherwise they haven't even sprouted yet, but they will soon. Um, 
The North Pole seeds come out puny, scrawny, and they taste and smell horrible. They taste chemically, like processed, and uh, they've got a, sm a foul uh, odor and aftertaste. These come out uh, plump and green, and uh, they smell like something, you know, you picked out of your grandmother's, uh, you know, backyard garden. Radically different. Same seeds, same batch. You could do this experiment until you grow a thousand years old. The results will be the same. Radically different. Now, people that grow stuff um, in various places of the world uh, would want to take advantage of this. And nobody knows about this stuff. Uh, by the way, I know some uh, secrets on how to do this. If anybody wants to fly me out uh, to uh, show you how to do this, um, I'll gladly uh, show you for free on how to do it. Free. Not going to charge anything. I'll show you how to do this for free. There's some tricks to doing this. And um, imagine whatever it is you're growing, growing faster, better, far more robustly at a ratio of, it's not at a ratio of uh, the phase shift on the magnet, which is 1 to 5, but a ratio of like 4 to 1 or 5 to 1. You think that makes a serious difference? Oh, well, hell yes it does. Um... And they experimented on birds and chickens and worms and seeds and see like if they would expose tomato seeds just the seed only exposure you remember that old story about jack and the beanstalk and magic seeds well kiss my ass there actually is a, such a thing as magic seeds i mean it's not magic it's science um but this is a science nobody knows about nobody talks about this is actually a genuinely suppressed book genuinely suppressed a you know, Jack and the Beanstalk, Magic Seeds, you know. No such thing as Magic Seeds, obviously. It's just, uh, you know, it's a crazy uh, kid's uh, story. Well, yeah, of course it is. But, I mean, these are actually Magic Seeds. Once you expose them properly, they grow magically different. It's like, well, there's got to be an anomaly in there. No, listen up. Listen up right damn now. They grow radically different. There's no ifs, ands, or buts, or like, oh, you didn't experiment right, or we need some more controls. No, I'm saying kiss my ass. This is exactly what happens every damn time. You'll not hear anything about this on the internet. Nowhere. Oh, here's the book. Sure, we'll hear about it. You ever heard anybody mention these two guys? Well, especially not this work, because it was genuinely suppressed. Actually, genuinely suppressed. Anybody can experiment and uh, prove this themselves. Tomato seeds, for example, when you uh, expose them to the North Pole, they come out acidic and kind of puny. Um, the South Pole exposed tomato seeds, not just, just not growth, uh, growth exposure, but seed-only exposure. That means you zap the tomato seeds with the South Pole of the magnet, strong field along the centrifugal edge, and uh, you will end up with low acidic tomatoes that are big, fat, and plump. Now imagine if you could tell someone, I can make this box of tomato seeds, which are all the same, I can, make, I can split them up, and I can make this side of the tomato seeds uh, come out fat, and, at fat with low acidity, and this side of the seeds come out scrawny with high acidity. People say, well, you're so full of crap. And it's like, no, let me prove it to you. Amazing! This is undeniable. Anybody could reproduce this. We know what the hell, you know, of all the videos that people watch, you know, and it's not about, you know, well, you know, let's click on that video. I'm not trying to get more clicks. I mean, I like information getting out there. I mean, imagine how important this is. Do you hear farmers like exposing their crops with magnetism to make it grow a certain way? Nope. Do you think farmers care a whole lot about their uh, crops growing uh, faster, better, more robustly instead of scrawnier? Yeah, you, every damn one of them does. Every damn one of them. Are any, any of them doing this? No, they don't know about it. I mean, I have to say, you know, again, damn. I mean, are you kidding me? Damn. This is, you know, all you can do is say damn. You know, I hate to cuss like that, but I mean, my God, this is undeniable. You know, duplicate it yourself. I don't care if you believe me. I don't give a damn if you believe me. It is reproducible. Every damn time it's reproducible. Contact me if you want any information on this. And um, like I said, I'm willing to fly out for free. Free. So I'm not selling anything. 
free f r e e and show you how to do this i'm not going to cover my own uh, traveling costs though um and i've discovered a couple of other things that i'd like to tell you i'm not repressing that i'll eventually let it loose but i have discovered a couple of things these guys haven't discovered as so far as uh, exposure Remember, 100% of the visible universe is governed by magnetism. Magnetism is the proverbial air inside the balloon, if you will, that holds up, supports 100% of the visible universe. So how important do you think magnetism is in the grand scheme of crap? Really damn important. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two. Or just enjoy the content, you know? I'm not selling anything to you. I like the information to get out there. Thanks for watching. Bye.